Well, I think it's the perfect weekend to air a summer-themed fragrances video. Today I've got a top 20 summer fragrances video. More luxury houses in today's video, designer and niche. Stick around for a week and then I'll do a less expensive version of this video as well. But today, find out all about my favorite summer fragrances for 2023, coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yesterday we're talking about summer fragrances from luxury houses. We've got designer, exclusive, and private collections, and we also have, you know, niche houses and more luxury uh, houses. And we've got a lot of new fragrances in today's collection of uh, fragrances. Uh, newer fragrances that I've been speaking a lot about and some that I've acquired here and there and purchased and uh, fragrances that I'm really, really enjoying and I think will make uh, great uh, fragrances. And also, we have a bit of a theme. It seems like fragrances are going green this year. Green and also Neroli Orange Blossom are some standout notes in the fragrances today for summer, summer 2023. But before I get to the fragrances, just want to also let you guys know, Scent Club Kit is almost selling out, so if you haven't gotten yours yet, uh, it's a great way to discover new fragrances. And the, the, the fragrances are more spring focused, but you can wear these fragrances any time of the year. We've got a great a green floral fragrance, a wonderful amber fougere, and then also a smoky aromatic tea gourmand fragrance. So great uh, collection of fragrances. And there are three times five ml samples of uh, fragrances you can carry with you and discover and sample new fragrances. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with the newest fragrance from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjan. It's Aqua Media Cologne Forte. If you haven't caught my video about this yesterday, I did it at first impressions. I didn't do a pause and come back because this fragrance is a cologne forte. For me, they're very, very fresh. So they're not going to be the beastliest fragrances. They're gonna, not gonna last a long time and things like that. Although some of you say you get great, great performances from fragrances like this and I'm not, I'm not the, that person that will. Um, but I think it's a great smell. It's better from the rest of the fragrances in this collection of Cologne Fortes. It features bergamot, verbena, sweet fennel, woody musk, patchouli, green moss, and hedione. So these are the notes that have been gathered from online. I like the smell. It's very green. It's very aromatic. It's very uh, uh, citrusy as well. And I think it'll be a great summer fragrance. Up next, going to the house of Dior. It's the latest Dior Riviera. So um, Dior Riviera, smells great but I think it's a bit of a letdown unfortunately. I like it. It's just not groundbreaking. Just like um, Aqua Media. It just is a very fresh fragrance but with the Dior Riviera it's roses, figs, and green notes and it's kind of sandy and it's a bit aromatic of course. It's got reminders of a Balade Sauvage from Dior also Eden Rock, and for me, when I wear this one, it also kind of reminds me of Philosophus from Diptyque, and also Lombre Down Low. So it's kind of a green fragrance, uh, but it's got rosiness and things like that. For me, it's a pretty good fragrance. It's not a wow fragrance. It's Dior Riviera from Dior. I'm featuring it here because it's fairly new and I'm gonna put it to use this summer and I think it will make a great summer offering. But those of you that you know have been doing fragrances for a long time, you'll probably say this one reminds me of that and that and that. So uh, speaking of another fig fragrance and you guys were asking me this question, is it as good as, is Dior Riviera as good as La Valliere from YSL? Well, here's my opinion. I much prefer La Valliere over Dior Riviera. La Valliere is amazing. It's a fig rose combo. It's so, so good, so delicious. It also has notes of bergamot, blackcurrant, geranium, jasmine, vetiver, cashmere, and musk. If I was going to pick between these two, I'd much prefer La Valliere. It just smells like my kind of a fragrance, you know? Fruity, fresh, figgy, rosy, and in here, it's more of a fruity fig rather than a green, but there's definitely a green presence as well. And I feel like when they're mentioning figs, you're getting the whole shebang. You're getting the, the leaves and also the uh, fruits here. But this stuff is amazing. I really love Lavalier. And as I was saying, if I wanted to pick one between Dior Riviera or Lavalier, YSL's Lavalier, hands down. So next, go into the house of Louis Vuitton. It's Pacific Chill, this one right here. It is a green theme, isn't it? 
and I'm looking at these bottles, there's a lot of green bottles. And this one to me is kind of like a cocktail, but not the kind you drink with alcohol, more like a fruity kind of detox cocktail, which is basically the theme here. It kind of definitely smells like that. I think it's a great fragrance. Out of some of the fragrances here, it's got a minty vibe. In fact, I think there's a few fragrances here that have a minty vibe, but this one's very, very fresh with peppermint, orange, black currant, lemons, coriander, may rose, carrot, apricot, basil, and bread seed fig and dates. The fig and dates are very, very minuscule in this one. It's not about fig and dates, but for me, it's very uh, pepperminty with some fruitiness and lots of citruses here. So it's Pacific Chill. Those of you that are into mint, do, have you tried it yet? Those of you that like Louis Vuitton fragrances, have you tried that yet? It would be ranked as my second favorite from that collection of fresh fragrances after Afternoon Swim. For me, Afternoon Swim is really, really a great fragrance. Really love it from Louis Vuitton. But I'm not featuring it in this video today because this is a brand new fragrance and I'm gonna put it to use in 2023. All right, up next, going to the house of Nishane. It's Wulong Cha X. Have you guys tried it yet? Man, this stuff is really good. The original was really great as well. It became a favorite of mine much later than uh, some of the other fragrances, but really like the coziness. And in this X version, they boosted up a floral edge to the fragrance and added magnolia so there's definitely kind of a creamy floral vibe here against the bergamot mandarin figs green tea thyme musk yuzu wonderful fragrance i think julianne rescanet did a great job with updating uh, wulong cha it's not so much different than the original, but I like the creamy floral edge with Wulong Cha and it makes for a great wear. So moving on to the house of uh, Juice Box. This is Spring Dance. This to me is a great take on a floral eau de cologne style fragrance. Really beautiful and very, very fresh. We've got jasmine here and it's jasmine sambac with grapefruit, rosemary, honeysuckle, musk, and dry amber. This is the kind of fragrance you would liberally spray, spray, spray because it smells really, really great. It's really, really calming and refreshing. And in the heat of the summer, this will really cool you off. So Spring Dance, a wonderful fragrance. Check it out if you don't know it. Uh, I really recommend, uh, I recommend all these fragrances. So that's why I'm featuring them here. But Moving on to the house of uh, Maison Crivelli, it's Neroli Nasimba. So Neroli Nasimba is a great take on Neroli, but be warned, there's a leathery dry down here. And if you don't like the idea of a leathery dry down when you're wearing fragrances in the summertime, you might want to avoid this. Because it is a Neroli fragrance after all, but I like what happens to this. And it's a unique adventure with the fact that you're starting off very, very fresh. And it settles to this kind of... Um, leathery, pleathery, kind of a leather a dry down, which I quite like in this one. It's Neroli with orange blossom. There's also Petagran. There's leather, vetiver, cystus, mandarin, cardamom, and pink pepper. I really like what it does, and I really love Neroli fragrances to begin with, but it's kind of a surprise to end up with uh, a leather here rather than something um, a bit more nondescript like vetiver or some nondescript woods or something. But the leather addition to this is quite nice, and I think this is a, a pretty solid release from Maison on Crivelli. It's Neroli Nasimba. Let me know if you've tried that one. I quite like it. Then moving on to the house of Lectomus London. It's Trajan. This one right here. And Trajan is a very citrusy fragrance. Lots of juicy citruses here with some aromatics and woods but it also has that kind of Baccarat Rouge vibe that sometimes you kind of, you know, crave because it's kind of like cocaine. You're addicted to that smell, kind of. And it's here with a very uh, citrusy edge with saffron here, blood orange, sage, ambergris, mandarin, lavender, oak moss, cedar, lemons, bergamot. Very, very juicy. And that whole reminder of the Ambroxum back, back rat rouge stuff is quite nice here. And it has a great trail and great longevity and perfect for summertime when you don't want to wear back rat rouge, but you want a citrusy edge and you'd want a little bit of it in there that makes for a great wear. So up next going to the house of Zerzhov. This is Torino 21. This is such a calming fragrance. Once again we've got verbena here and verbena is I think becoming a bit trendy don't you think? The verbena here and along with the mint, musk, lemon, basil, blackcurrant. For me it reminds me of these Ricola lemon mint um, uh, lozenges or also kind of like a lemon mint tea experience. So it wears like that. It's very very cozy even though there's no 
T mentioned in here, I get that kind of a very smooth tea vibe. But loads of mint, loads of verbena, and then lemon, because verbena has the lemony edge, it boosts up the lemoniness, but it's not sour. It's very calming and smooth and very, very creamy and uh, cozy. Beautiful fragrance. And, you know, a friend wears this one. I don't wear it as much as a friend, but a friend wears it, and they this fragrance lasts a long time on this person, which is kind of surprising to me for a freshie. Either way, Torino 21 from Zerzhov smells fantastic. And I've got to feature this one. This one's one of my all-time favorite freshies, and I love the way this smells. The smell is one of the most intoxicating and one of the most beautiful, very, very gorgeous smell. Bergamot 22, one of the best citrus fragrances ever. I love it. It's the greenness, it's the floral touches, it's the juiciness of the citruses, plus the woods in the dry down, the zing and the spice and the musk and everything together. It's top notch. There's also a bit of green vibe in here, but one of the most beautiful citrus fragrances with bergamot, vetiver, grapefruit, orange blossom, pettigran, musk, cedar. Bergamot 22, hands down my favorite Le Labo fragrance for a long time. Then moving on to the house of Italibre Orange, this is you or someone like you. It is a green minty kind of a fragrance once again. There's a bit of fruitiness here, there's some green notes in here, there's also a bit of rosiness with uh, musk, bergamot, and grapefruit, and really love the mint in this. The mint is so authentic smelling, really love, because I grew up with mint, my, my family used lots of mint, dry and fresh. When you smell this, it's like you're spreading, uh, sprinkling dry mint flakes on top of a kind of a citrusy juice or something. It's really, really beautiful. I love that combination. Really smells great and really authentic mint and not like toothpaste. So you are someone like you. It's a fantastic fragrance from that house that I really, really love. Italie Brut Orange, one of my favorite fragrances from that house. Moving on to the house of Comme des Garçons. This is Marseille. Marseille is soap in a bottle. If you like the idea of soap, it's perfect here. This is a perfect soap fragrance or soapy fragrance inspired by Marseille's soap making industry. And it makes sense that they would make a soapy fragrance. It features neroli, musk, cosmone, patalia, orange blossom, woods, and amber. Whenever you see neroli and orange blossom together, it already kind of goes into a soapy direction. Not kind of, most of the time it does. And here we've got some notes added to this to create a soap bomb. And it smells really, really great. Really, really wonderful. I need to get another bottle because this goes down pretty easily. It is an eau de toilette and you you can spray it totally liberally in the heat of the summer. It is powdery, it has a kind of soapy powderiness, but in the end, it's very neroli orange blossom. Marseille from the house of Comme des Garçons. Fantastic, fantastic fragrance. Here's a new one from the house of Raja Parfums. This is Isola Blue. There's something about this. This is so intoxicating. Uh, when I wear this one, also, there's a bit of a musky Baccarat Rouge like Ambroxan thing under there. But also, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Terre de Hermes. I, I don't know where I'm getting that, but something vetiver y like Terre de Hermes is in here. But um, there's no vetiver mentioned in here. Here, but very very intoxicating and very very lemony but musky kind of powdery lemony fragrance here that I really really think it's a great fragrance. I think this fragrance used to be called Oligarch. It was rebranded and renamed obviously for some reasons we probably know about but lemons, bergamot, lime, pink pepper, coconut, blackcurrant, cut grass, amber, juniper, lavender, champaca, mate and I can go on with the list of notes because there's tons and tons of notes here. Uh, unlike other Raja Parfums fragrances, I like this fragrance from start to finish because sometimes Raja Parfums fragrances, the top notes seem boring uh, and you get to a, a great, you know, base notes. But here, with this fragrance, I absolutely love it from start to finish. It's a really, really great fragrance. Very intoxicating and addicting kind of a smell. So Isola Blue from the house of Raja Parfums, really, really great fragrance, I think. Then going to the house of uh, Thomas de Monaco, this is Occur, this one right here. Occur is a magnolia fragrance with kind of the DNA of raw gold, but this is a lot fresher. There's an ambery dry down with ambroxan and musk. There's tonka here, there's rose, but there's pink pepper and magnolia. And magnolia is very creamy, smooth, beautiful white flower. It's not anything like a jasmine or a tuberose or a gardenia. This is more of a creamy, non 
distinct, discre you know, like it doesn't have a very distinct smell to it. It does have a floral edge and it also has a, you know, a bit of a tart, sour lemoniness in there as well. But the smell is really, really great. And I love the way it smells when it's warm outside and it's at night and, you know, after the heat is kind of gone away, the smell is projecting off the tree. And it's captured beautifully here with the pink pepper and the ambroxan and rose tonka. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. It's ochre from the house of uh, Thomas de Monaco. Then I'm kind of throwing in something a little off the wall here. This is from the house of Ormond Jane. It's Avernia, this one right here. It's, it's an, and the, in the end, it's about oak moss, and oak moss generally is for, for really heavy fragrances. Here, though, I think it's a perfect amount of the oak moss in here, and it's not overwhelming like all fragrances from the house of Ormond Jane. I really like the, the amount of oak moss is in here. But there's also some pink pepperiness. It's powdery orris. There's cashmiran, rose, blackcurrant, freesia, jasmine. Really wonderful, wonderful fragrance here. I really, really love it. But when I'm also wearing it, there's that kind of a light reminder of something like ambroxan in there to give you like a musky boost to the fragrance. And I think that's what I like about it. The oak moss is a bit pine-like, a bit coniferous. Uh, absolutely wonderful fragrance. I really love Avernia and I think it'll be perfect in the summertime as well. And then moving on to the house of Goldfield and Banks. This is Ingenious Ginger. Can you see how much I've worn? I took this down to LA with me and I've been wearing it quite a bit and I really love the way the ginger in here is. Really beautiful. It's not your typical ginger where it's completely spicy and zingy. It's more about the flower, the ginger flower, but there's the, the addition of some zing and spice in there as well from the ginger root. But there's bergamot here, lemons, magnolia, jasmine, rose, mandarin, orange, sandalwood, and patchouli. And I love the... Um, um, I feel like there's vanilla here and there's a bit of an overdose of vanilla, but it's very non distinct and it creates for a very creamy smoothness which uh, I think uh, because of the ginger in here and the zing and the spice it kind of cuts away from that so it makes it for a bit comforting so it's not your traditional like really really spicy ginger here but definitely it's there with the flower it's really beautiful ingenious ginger from Goldfield and Banks a beautiful beautiful fragrance for summer 2023 then we're going to the house of uh, Celine it's parade Are you guys familiar with parade this, to me, has become one of my favorite fragrances from this house. And in the end, it's kind of a Neroli citrus fragrance, but nothing groundbreaking. But they've done a great, great, great job creating this with the way it smells. Absolutely amazing. And the right amount of everything in here with vetiver, Neroli, bergamot, oak moss, and musk. A bit powdery as well. I feel like there's a bit of orris in here, just like a lot of their other fragrances. But it's a perfect summer fragrance. Parade is fantastic. And Celine does some great fragrances. The only problem with Celine are they're a bit subdued so if you're looking for beast mode I don't think it's going to be for you but moving on to the house of Ella K, a fragrance I purchased while I was in France. This is uh, Poem de Sagano. Um, I fell in love with this back in 2019 and I've been wanting a bottle of it. Finally bought it while I was in France. And what I like about this one, there's a, a bamboo note with mint, so it's a, a green fragrance in the end. But there's also some bergamot here. There's grapefruit and eucalyptus, but it wears beautifully. It's very calming. There's a bit of a um, meditative vibe about this one and I think it's from the bamboo, but the mint gives you a bit of a wake-up feel and it's not toothpastey whatsoever it smells really really great guys if you don't know the I should also say there's a bit of a cucumbery vibe more like the the inside of the cucumber where the you know the wet watery kind of part is there, it's a bit of that that in here as well and it has a you know a very calming uh, quality because cucumbers and the, the 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 food itself or the the vegetable itself has a very calming edge to it when I eat it but I get that here as well because the bamboo is acting a bit like that for me but really great fragrance it's a, a fragrance house after uh, perfumer Sonia Constance. So she's the perfumer behind all of these fragrances and this one's super fantastic. So Poem de Sagano from the house of Ella K. Do you know this one? So in case you didn't realize, this is an unranked list, but we've got two more fragrances for you and then I've got a couple of bonus options, the, the usual suspects I left for the uh, end of the video. Uh, but this is from the house of Parfum the Empire. This is Corsica Furiosa. So once again, we've got a bit of a minty greenness here as well with some tomato leaf and then there's some eau de vie, there's oak moss and then lentiscus extractions but a wonderful wonderful fragrance 
this is. Once again, very, very fresh and green, herbal, and also a light booziness here because Eau de Vie is a fruit brandy. And then that tomato leaf gives you that bitter greenness. This fragrance is amazing. And this is one of my all-time favorite houses. I'm going to start featuring a lot of their house uh, the fragrances in different videos. And I'm starting off with this one here, Corsica Furiosa. Fantastic fragrance. If you haven't tried it, definitely try it. And if you're curious to find out more about uh, Parfum the Empire, I've got a whole video on the house. Go catch it. It was launched last uh, end of last year. So this is Parfum the Empire Corsica Furiosa. And then last but not least, going to the house of Sospiro. This is Vibrato, this one right here. Yes, this one reminds me of... Um, uh, Tigar from the house of uh, Bulgari, but for me, there's more gingery zinginess in here. Whereas Tigar did remind me of uh, a bit of gingeriness, but it was about grapefruit. Here we've got more of a zing and spice with the ginger, but it's bergamot, grapefruit, ginger, powdery notes, herbal notes, musk, cedar, jasmine, patchouli, magnolia, amber, orris. Really, really love it. This is a fragrance I smelled for the first time at Lucky Scent a few weeks ago. Instantly thought, this is Tigar. I'm obsessed with Tigar, really, really love Tigar, and I like the idea of other fragrances that remind me of Tigar because Tigar has a great ta trail. Uh, it does have a bit of ambroxan. Here they're not saying there's ambroxan, but I do feel like there is a bit of it in here as well, but really a great, great fragrance. Really love wearing it, and I love overspraying this stuff because I sprayed a bunch of it while I was in LA, and it smells so good. I had to have one. So it's a vibrato from the house of Sospiro, and that's the last fragrance for you guys. Anyway, those are my top 20 summer fragrances. More luxury and niche. Uh, I'll do a separate video with the less expensive options as soon as well, maybe next weekend. Uh, but let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Have you tried them? Are you curious to try them if you haven't? And what are you going to be wearing this summer uh, as a, uh, for fragrances? Again, I personally don't have rules for wearing fragrances. Whenever I feel like I wear, if it's a, a heavy fragrance for the summer or a, you know, a fresh fragrance for the winter, I'll do it. But if I was going to select summer fragrances, these are the ones I would be doing this particular summer 2023. But let me know what you guys are going to be wearing. Other than that, guys, again, I'll let you know about the Scent Club. Uh, we're running out, so get your uh, kit before we run out. Other than that, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. So I've got a couple of fragrance suggestions for you as a bonus. I left these off because I already featured a fragrance from this, these two houses in the main list uh, because they have uh, new fragrances. But I have to come back around to Maison Francis Kirkjian's Gentle Fluidity, one of the fragrances that's perfect for extreme heat and humidity. I think this will cut right through. It's so sharp, it's metallic, it's very fresh, it's screechy, but perfect with juniper, woods, musk, coriander, nutmeg, amber woods, and vanilla. And then we have something similar from Nishane. It's Hachivat, but this is more of a fruity take on it. It's uh, featuring pineapple, oak moss, grapefruit, bergamot, woods, cedar, patchouli, and jasmine. These fragrances are perfect, perfect for high heat, high humidity, because they're so sharp, metallic, and they'll cut right through uh, and, uh, you know, calm you with all that heat out there. They smell great as well, so that's why I'm recommending them. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today. Have a good one. Goodbye.